Hey guys, welcome back to Mondays at the Museum. I'm Carrie, and I'm here at the Anna Bemis Pulver Museum in York, Nebraska. So today we're going to be talking about somebody who is relatively unknown for how famous he became. And uh, I just can't believe that we have somebody from York, Nebraska that went on to co-found the Academy of Arts and Sciences. Uh, kind of a big deal, and yet nobody has heard of him. So today we're going to talk a little bit about him. I'm going to show you the area we have up dedicated to him in his display and then throughout the week because he lived such an interesting life and there's just so so many things that he was involved in i'm going to be posting to our social media different things about him and his life and his family and and the movies that he did so uh in case you don't know who i'm talking about his name is fred niblo and in 2024 he would be 150 years old which is just awesome so fred niblo he was born as frederick leadkey uh, which we do have a lot of lead keys here, still local. Um, on January 6, 1874, here in York, he changed his name in the early 1900s to Fred Niblo. Um, supposedly, he got Niblo from a theater that he was working in at the time. The owner of that particular theater was a man named William Niblo, so he seemed to have stole that a little bit. Um, he toured as an actor in vaudeville for uh, more than 20 years, and that is where he met his first wife. Her name was Josephine Cohan, and at the time he was managing the four Cohans. Uh, they got married in 1901. They had one child together. However, Josephine passed away in 1916. Uh, he did have a pretty big 1916 aside from his wife passing away he also made his film debut that year um, in an Australian silent film after that he became a producer and director of many pieces uh, several of which actually starred his second wife Enid Bennett um, it was around this time that he signed a three-year contract with Paramount uh, from 1918 to 1921 he did a lot of movies during that time. His biggest picture, I think, overall was Ben-Hur, A Tale of Christ, which he directed in 1925. But he also did The Mark of Zorro in 1920 and The Three Musketeers in 1921. Those were also big hits. Um, he worked with people like Rudolph Valentino in Blood and Sand, Greta Garbo in The Temptress, Joan Crawford in Dream of Love, and he even acted in a few pieces himself before he left the industry entirely. Um, so Niblo, at that time, like I said, he was huge, a, a really big time director, and um, he went on to become one of the 36 people that were on the original panel that started the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts and Sciences. He also has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. It's on the 7,000 block of Hollywood Boulevard. There's also a statue of him out there some, somewhere, I've been told. Um, throughout the years, he either acted in produced or directed almost 60 films, which is just huge. Um, he passed away on November 11th, 1948 at the age of 74, and he's buried in California, actually in the Forest Lawn Memorial Park in Glendale, California. So what they said was he was really great with silent films, but then when talking was introduced, he kind of it wasn't his niche, and so he kind of faded into obscurity at that time. So, uh, But a pretty big deal to be born here in York, Nebraska, and go on to co-found the Academy of Arts and Sciences. So now I'm going to show you uh, the area of the display that we have dedicated to him. So here we have our Niblo Corner. Um, he is the, the main person here featured in our visual arts category of our artwork exhibition. Here's a photo of Fred with his second wife, Enid Bennett. Uh, Fred was actually quite the amateur photographer himself, so we do have several photos that he took as well. This is on vacation in 1908. I believe that was in Egypt that he took that picture. Um, there are several newspaper clippings, including a Sun Theater clipping. Uh, four days starting next Monday, they're going to show the Three Musketeers, and here you can see York's own Fred Niblo, known here in his boyhood as Fred Liebke. Uh, we also have a listing of all of the films that he was involved in, whether that was as director, actor, screenwriter. And so you can see a lot of these, like here's Ben-Hur, The Red Lily, Mysterious Lady, just all sorts of things that he was involved in there. And the last movie that he did was in 1942. Here's an exhibitor press book mention. Um, it's kind of mostly about his wife. However, you have the Fred Niblo director paragraph there. 
And here is the cast list and summary for The Red Lily. And you can see here, original story written and directed by Fred Niblo. Um, there's a newspaper clipping. He's featured in a lot of newspaper articles, but this one is specifically by Jim McKee. It's from the Lincoln Journal Star from 2011. And it does actually address what I'm talking about today and just almost unknown in his native state, which is just crazy to me because, you know, the Academy Awards, the Oscars are huge every year and, and people don't really talk about the, uh, the founders of that so much. Uh, Fred's house. So he was born here in York. I was told this was moved at one point. Uh, but here at the 8th Street and Platt Avenue, where he lived his first 14 years. And then we are very blessed because we have a previous curator here by the name of Kent Bedian, who did work, like the work of thousands here, uh, collecting photos and information. So uh, we have binders and binders and binders full of research as well as, uh, so Annette was his mother. We do have his her gowns here in the collection. And so there's like scans of the homestead and the family Bible. Here's a really great picture of Fred, age 10. So there is just dozens of these folders full of uh, research, which we put up uh, as just a research material binders there. So, so uh, absolutely come and check this out if you are able to. It will be included in our artwork exhibit, which is gonna run until August 2nd. And if you're interested in anything more on Fred Niblo, absolutely pay attention to our social media, so Facebook and Instagram this week, as I will be posting different uh, clips and newspaper clippings and things like that, uh, dealing with Fred and his life. Trying to keep it relevant here to York, but, uh, but he went on to do really great things. And so so uh, thanks for tuning in this week, and we will see you next week.